Hello students, today we are going to take a new chapter in English from a textbook, the English textbook, supplementary reader, Footprints Without Feet and we are going to take the chapter, A Triumph of Surgery. The title suggests that a surgeon has performed an impossible surgery in which he is triumphant, in which he is successful but as we read on the chapter we come to realize that the surgery was actually not performed at all the story a triumph of surgery is a story of a pet dog who is pampered by his rich mistress the name of the pet dog is tricky and indeed tricky is very tricky tricky is pampered and is overfed by his rich mistress he falls seriously ill and his mistress consults a veterinary surgeon does he perform an operation does the dog recover Let's read and find out. Why is, Miss, why is Mrs. Fumphrey worried about Tricky? What does she do to help him? Is she wise in this? Who does I refer to in this story? After reading, we'll be able to answer all these questions. I was really worried about Tricky this time. I had pulled up my car when I saw him in the street with his mistress and I was shocked at his appearance. So now we clearly know who this I is. The I is the surgeon. The I is the veterinary doctor. The story begins in the first person the surgeon the veterinary doctor is narrating an incident a very funny incident which happened with him he is talking about a rich mistress and her over pampered and overfed pet dog he says i was really about tricky this time this statement itself says that he is the regular wet of Tricky. The mistress of Tricky always refers Tricky to this veterinary. I had pulled up my car when I saw him in the street with his mistress and I was shocked at his appearance. This statement here again tells us about the nature of this veterinary surgeon, this doctor. He is really worried for his patient, for his dog. When he sees Tricky and his mistress walking on the sidewalks, he pulls up his car, he parks his car and he goes and meets Tricky and his mistress. He had become hugely fat like a bloated sausage. You know what is a sausage? If you have watched Tom and Jerry, Many a time we see Jerry taking the sausage and running. Sausages are Goan's specialities. It's a special type of food prepared by the Goans in India and the Brazilians and the Argentinians or the Portuguese. They, in fact, sausages were uh, made by the Africans. The Africans who were slaves, they were given leftover, leftover meat and out of this leftover meat, they prepared a beautiful, a delicious dish called as sausages. So, his eyes bloodshot and rheumy started stayed straight ahead and his tongue lolled from his jaws. So, the narrator says that when he saw Tricky, Tricky resembled a sausage with legs on the four of its ends 
sticking out from the sausage it looked really a very very funny dog and uh, his eyes were blood bloodshot that means the dog had red color eyes and rumi rumi is the white matter the white matter which runs which was running from the dog's eye so it was a really serious matter started stayed straight ahead and his tongue lolled from his jaws the dog why did the dog look straight ahead because it could not even it could not even turn its neck turn its head the neck and the head and the body were all of the same size the dog was so fat that it could not even turn its head to the left neither to the right to look at anything and that is why it had to look straight and his tongue lolled from his jaws lolling means uh coming out hanging out why is the tongue hanging out because it is finding it difficult to breathe it is really a very serious case for the dog and if the dog is not treated in the right manner at the right time perhaps it will be too late and therefore the author says that he was really worried about tricky when he saw him with its master mrs fumfrey hastened to explain he was so listless mr harriet he seemed to have no energy he was so listless lifeless <clears throat> listless means lifeless mr harriot he seemed to have no energy i thought he must be suffering from malnutrition you know what is malnutrition underfed whereas the case is exactly the opposite the dog is in fact overfed and here mrs pumphrey pumphrey she says that the dog is listless the dog is lifeless because it has no energy and the reason of not having energy because the dog is underfed so i have been giving him some little extras between meals to build him up some malt and cod liver oil and a bowl of horlicks and a night to make him sleep nothing much really so again look at the diet the dog is being fed it is being fed uh, some little extras in between the meals that mean apart from the regular meals i wonder what she is feeding the dog for its for its regular meal so she says apart from the regular meal to build him up she gave him some malt and some cod liver oil and a bowl of horlicks at the night to make him sleep and she to top it all she says it is nothing really much and did you cut down on the sweet things as i told you asked the doctor the doctor asks mrs fumphrey if she cut down on the sweet things that she had been feeding the dog too much sweet for the dog and that is why the dog is so plump and stout oh i did for a bit but he seemed to be so weak i had to relent so what do we make of this mistress what do you think of mrs pumphrey as a caretaker of a dog the dog is under her care is she taking the right care of the dog okay fine she's taking the dog for a walk she sees to it that the dog meets all the comfort of its life but what is she actually doing is she is not letting the dog to live a dog's life she is overfeeding the dog and the exercise what she is giving as compared to the diet is far less the diet exceeds the exercise in great measures the dog is unable to digest the food she says that she wants the dog to sleep at night the dogs don't sleep at night it is in the nature of the dogs to stay awake at night to guard the house to get up at every little bit of sound every little movement 
and bark at strangers and mrs pumphrey wants the dog to sleep at night and she is feeding it with malt and horlicks and other supplements i can't bear to refuse him oh i did for a bit but he seemed to be so weak i had to relent he does love cream cakes and chocolates so i can't bear to refuse him i looked down again at the little dog that was the trouble tricky's only fault was greed so tricky was at fault and the only fault was tricky did not know how to refuse food that was offered to him food is being offered to tricky in way in excess way 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 ahead in excess and yet the dog keeps on gobbling and gobbling and gobbling up the food he had never been known to refuse food he would tackle a meal at any hour of the day or night and i wondered about all the things mrs pumphrey hadn't mentioned so mr mrs pumphrey has mentioned so many things that she is feeding the dog and the narrator the vet is saying that he wonders of all the things that mrs pumphrey has not revealed are you giving him plenty of exercise was the next question the doctor asked mrs pumphrey well he has his little walks with me as you can see but hotkin the gardener has been down with lum lumbar lumbago so there has been no ring throwing lately hotkin hotkin is the gardener and he is suffering from an ailment the pain in the joints or, or the muscles from the lower back okay so lumbago is a pain in the joints and muscles of the lower back so that's the that's the excuse or that's the reason why the gardener is not exercising the dog do you think the dog would be catching rings at this size it can't even turn its neck to look to the left or to the right when imagine when the gardener is throwing the rings for the dog to fetch for the dog to catch do you really think that the dog would fetch the ring would he be keen enough would he be interested why why do you think that uh, the gardener hodgkin is suffering from muscle pain uh, it is he who is throwing the rings he it is he who is going and fetching it picking it up bending down and the dog is doing nothing so who is doing the most of the exercise the dog or the gardener and the gardener finally called it off the gardener decided not to do the exercise for the dog or for himself as we can say well he has his little walks with me as you can see but hodgkin the gardener has been down with lumbago so there has been no ring throwing lately i tried to sound severe says the doctor i tried to sound sound severe now i really mean this if you don't cut his food right down and give him more exercise he is going to be really ill and you must harden your heart and keep him out on a very strict diet mrs pumphrey wrung her hands oh i will mr harriet i am sure you are right but it is so difficult so very difficult so do you think that mrs pumphrey would agree to starve the dog would agree to give less and less food to the dog i doubt it i doubt it because her statement says it is so very very difficult to refuse the dog she had she set off head down along the road as if determined to put the new regime into practice immediately the way she had left the narrator felt that perhaps she might listen to his advice and perhaps <coughs> she might cut down on the diet of the dog tricky i watched the progress with growing concern tricky was tottering along in his little tweed tweed coat 
he had a whole wardrobe of these coats for the cold weather and a raincoat for the wet days so as the narrator the surgeon he sees them walk past and the dog is tottering moving in a very unusual manner a dog doesn't actually totter the way he was walking was very very unusual and he watched him and here we are uh, brought to the notice that uh, tricky has a lot of accessories a lot of coats a wardrobe of coats as it is described a wardrobe of coats for the dog coats for the winter season coats for the rainy season woolen coats and rain coats he struggled on drooping in his harness i thought it wouldn't be long before i heard from mrs pumphrey the expected call came within a few days mrs pumphrey was distraught mrs pumphrey was distraught means she was very very upset so as the surgeon had thought it happened he was expecting a call and a serious call at that of the health of the dog tricky and within a few days time he gets a call and mrs pumphrey was sounding very distraught she was sounding really very upset tricky would eat nothing refused even his favorite dishes and besides he had bouts of vomiting he spent all his time lying on a rug panting didn't want to go for walks didn't want to do anything so finally tricky reached the stage where he could no longer eat any more food in fact he was bringing out whatever he had eaten he was just lying almost lifeless on the mat didn't want to go for walks didn't want to do anything i had made my plans in advance since the doctor expected that such a circumstances was going to happen he was expecting what was going to happen he was waiting for a call he had planned well before time i had made my plans in advance the only way was to get tricky out of the house for a period i suggested that he be hospitalized for about a fortnight to be kept under observation so the doctor knew what he had to do he very well knew what he had to do and he fe- he felt that the only way to get tricky out of the house for, was a was for for a period so to the only uh, ailment the only sorry the only solution for the ailment the only cure that was possible for tricky was he had to keep tricky as far as possible from tricky's mistress that is mrs pomfrey i suggested that he be hospitalized for about a f- a fortnight to be kept under observation fortnight 14 days the poor lady almost swooned almost fainted she was sure he would pine and die if he did not see her every day pine means long for unhappily uh, think about unhappily uh, call or all unhappily uh, look look out for the poor lady almost swooned she was sure he would pine and die if he did not see her every day but i took a firm line firm line firm decision <coughs> tricky was ill and this was the only way to save him in fact i thought it best to take him without delay and followed by mrs pumphrey's wailing i marched out of to the car carrying the little dog wrapped in a blanket so what we see here that the doctor finally has his way he forcefully carries the dog he carries the dog tricky in a blanket and mrs pumphrey is crying she doesn't want the dog to go she she doesn't want the dog to be out of sight she feels that the dog would pine for her the dog would long for her the dog would feel uh, lifeless without her 
but it's just the opposite case she is too much fond of the dog she likes the dog too much and she cannot bear to stay without the dog and when the doctor is forcefully taking the dog she is wailing she is crying and she is following the doctor but the doctor forcefully he takes the dog and he goes towards his car the entire staff was roused and maids rushed in and out bringing his day day bed his night bed favorite cushions toys and rubber rings breakfast bowl lunch bowl lunch bowl supper bowl just imagine different 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 things for different 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 occasions for breakfast a different bowl for lunch a different bowl for supper a different bowl different bed for the daytime different bed for the night time his favorite cushions toys rubber things and all those things we can get a picture of how much the dog is pampered how much mrs pumphrey loves the dog that she is not only overfeeding it she is overprotective she is trying to protect the dog from nature from the cold from the heat from the summer she has seen to it that whatever the dog likes is given to the dog realizing that my car would never hold all the stuff i started to drive away as i moved off mrs pumphrey with a despairing cry threw an armful of little coats through the window i looked in the mirror before i turned the corner of the drive everybody was in tears so not only mrs pumphrey tricky was the apple of the eye tricky was the apple of the eye of everybody working for mrs pumphrey literally everybody was crying for tricky when he was being taken to the hospital out on the road i glanced down, glanced down at the pathetic little animal gasping on the seat by my side i patted the head of tricky made a brave effort to wag its tail poor old lad i said you haven't a kick in you but i think i know a cure for you so while he was driving he looked at tricky who was sitting on the side seat and he patted the head of tricky and tricky he made a brave effort to wag its tail a way of saying thank you thank you for for getting me away from my kind hearted but dangerous mistress and he says that though the dog seemed as if he had no life left in him but he knew that he would certainly be cured of his ailment he knew the exact cure for tricky's ailment so let's read and find out again is the narrator as rich as tricky's master mistress how does it treat the dog why is he tempted to keep tricky on as a permanent guest why does mrs pumphrey think the dog's recovery is a triumph of a surgery okay so by these questions we can guess what is ahead what is in store for us what do we have to expect in the story ahead at the surgery the household dogs surged round me tricky looked down at the noisy noisy pack with dull eyes and when put down lay motionless on the carpet so the narrator has a number of dogs he calls this place as his surgery he calls this place as a surgery perhaps he is a surgeon and perhaps he operates upon dogs with certain ailments with injuries or whatever so when these dogs saw a new guest a fellow dog being brought to the surgery they all are very very inquisitive and they wanted to know what this dog is how is his behavior and when tricky was put down on the carpet he just lay there he didn't even bother to move the other dogs 
after sniffing around him for a few seconds, decided he was an uninteresting object and ignored him. I made up a bed for him in a warm, loose box next to the one where the old dog's other dogs slept. For two days, I kept an eye on him, giving him no food but plenty of water. So the treatment for Tricky is started. So the narrator makes a bed for him in a warm, loose box next to the one where the other dogs slept. So apart, uh, in what way is Tricky's bed different now than it was with Mrs. Pumphrey? Here he's giving a he's been given a loose, warm box, and he is being made to be slept with the other dogs, where the other dogs are kept. For two days, I kept an eye on him, giving him no food but plenty of water. The narrator only keeps an eye; he doesn't attend to it he doesn't give any injection neither does he uh, administer any medicine he just keeps an eye on the dog and sees to it that the dog has plenty of water to drink and no food to eat at all at the end of the second day he started to show some interest in his surroundings and on the third he began to whimper when he heard the dogs in the yard so the sign of life okay he began to show some interest in the dogs and he began to whimper a particular sound he makes when he heard the other dogs in the yard when i opened the door tricky trotted out and was immediately engulfed by joe the greyhound and his friends so what is the name of the greyhound the name of the greyhound is joe greyhound is a breed a dog's breed <clears throat> and his friends after rolling him over and thoroughly inspecting him the dogs moved off down the garden tricky followed them rolling slightly with his surplus fat so now tricky was able to at least move around and when the dogs had the inspection done and the interest was over they went in the garden to play went in the lawns to play and tricky followed rolling behind topsy turvy falling down getting up running again later that day i was present at feeding time i watched while tristan slopped the food into the bowls there was the usual headlong rush followed by the sounds of high speed eating Every dog knew that if he fell behind the others he was liable he was liable to have some competition for the last part of the meal so tristan the one again who is uh, looking after the dogs feeding the dogs he had brought the food for the dogs and kept the food in a bowl and all the dogs they immediately began to eat the food because they knew that if they delay even for a little bit they might not get the food that they need to when they had finished tricky took a walk around the shining bowls licking casually inside one or two of them next day an extra bowl was put out for him and i was pleased to see him jostling his way towards it so each dog had their own bowls this time a bowl was not placed for tricky and poor tricky had to wait till all the other dogs had finished their meals and try to lick off whatever little was remaining in those bowls so now it is a sign that he is feeling hungry the author the narrator is very happy to see this and for the next feed he sees to it that that an extra bowl was kept for tricky next day an extra bowl was put out for him and i was pleased to see him jostling his way towards it from then on his progress was rapid <coughs> he began to make good progress from then on his progress was rapid 
He had no medical treatment of any kind, but all day he ran about with the dogs, joining in the friendly scrimmage, scrimmages. What are scrimmages? Running about, trying to tackle with one another. He discovered the joys of being bowled over, tramped on and squashed every few minutes. He became an accepted member of the gang. An unlikely silky little object among the shaggy crew fighting like a tiger for his share at mealtimes and hunting rats in the old hen house at night. He had never had such a time in his life. See the different li of lifestyle. The social or the economic difference between the narrator and Mrs. Pomfrey. Here there are rats in the uh, hen house, he says, at night. And now Tricky has learned to fight for his food. He fights like a tiger for his food. That's what he said. Okay, Silky little object among the shaggy crew fighting like a tiger for a share at meal times and hunting rats in the old hen house at night. He had never had such a time in his life. Do you think the dog is enjoying his life here, his stay in the surgery with the surgeon, with the doctor? All the while, Mrs. Pumphrey hovered anxiously in the background, ringing a dozen times a day for the latest bulletins. I dodged the question about whether his cushions were being turned regularly or his correct coat worn according to the weather, but I was able to tell her that the little fellow was out of danger and convulsing rapidly. So, here the dog is having a hell of a time. He is enjoying himself with other dogs. And there, his mistress, Mrs. Pumphrey, she is so worried about the dog that time and again and time and again, she is ringing up the doctor, she is ringing up the surgeon, the vet, and inquiring about the dog, inquiring whether the right type of coat is being uh, worn or, or being ma made to be worn for the, the dog Pumphrey, sorry, the dog, uh, what's its name, uh, Tricky, and whether the cushions are being turned regularly or not. She is greatly bothered, she is greatly worried about the dog, and here the dog is having a dog of a lifetime. And when he said that the dog was convulsing rapidly, that means he was uh, recovering rapidly, the word convulsing seemed to do something to Mrs. Pumphrey. She started to bring around fresh eggs two dozen at a time to build up each, to build up tricky strength. For a happy period, my partners and I had two eggs each for breakfast. So, the word convulsing made the mistress, she felt that the dog is now recovering and the dog is now able to eat food. So let's provide him with more and more nutritious food. So she was sending over a dozen, over a dozen of eggs, each for breakfast. But when the bot bottle of wines, the word convulsing seemed to have done something to Mrs. Pumphrey. She started bringing fresh eggs, two dozen at a time, to build up tricky strength. For a happy period, my partners and I had two each, two eggs each for breakfast. But when the bottles of wine began to arrive, the real possibilities of the situation began to dawn on the household. Okay, now what can the real situation be? be? What are the real, real, the real possibilities of the situation be? Okay, it's a matter to be pondered upon. So. Uh, when the bottles of wine began to arrive, the real possibilities of the situation began to dawn on the household. So what possibilities they have? One is, why not let Tricky stay here for a long, long, long time so that they can enjoy a good breakfast and a good drink of wine. It was to enrich Tricky's blood. Lunch became a ceremonial occasion with two glasses of wine before and several during the meals. So now they were having a emperor of a time, a king of a time you can say 
and they were really enjoying themselves at the expense of tricky all this luxurious food was being sent for tricky which the doctor and his uh, comrades doctor and his friends were relishing before breakfast after breakfast before lunch after lunch having wine between the meals they are living life like a king really every dog has a day here the doctor is having his day we could hardly believe it when the brandy came to put a final edge on tricky's constitution for a few nights the fine spirit was rolled around inhaled and reverently drunk there were days of deep content starting well with the extra egg in the morning improved and sustained my midday wine and finishing luxuriously round the fire with the brandy what a luxurious life for the doctor it was a temptation to keep tricky on as a permanent guest but i knew mrs pumphrey was suffering and after a fortnight felt compelled to phone and tell her that the little dog had recovered and was awaiting collection the doctor didn't want to uh, really keep the dog with him but he in a jovial way he says that he has temptation to keep the dog for as long as possible but then he thought about how much mrs pumphrey might be missing her pet dog so he phones her up finally he phones her up and asks her to collect her dog from here <clears throat> within minutes about 30 feet of gleaming black metal drew up outside the surgery what is this 30 feet of gleaming black metal a lumbago a what type of car is it the chauffeur opened the door and i could just make out the figure of mrs pumphrey almost lost in the interiors what a luxury what a luxurious car 30 feet long car and a chauffeur when he when he opened the door he could not make out where mrs pumphrey was with a little difficulty he was able to make out the figure of mrs pumphrey sitting in in the car her hands were tight tightly clasped in front of her her lips trembled oh mr harriet do tell me the truth is he really better yes he is fine there's no need for you to get out of the car i'll go and fetch him why do you think the doctor didn't want mrs pumphrey to get out of the car because if she would have seen the state in which the dog was kept she would have fainted there and then for sure this time for sure she would have fainted because the way she was treating her dog at home the way she was pampering him and the way the dog was actually kept here there was a lot of difference Yes he's fine there's no need for you to get out of the car i'll go and fetch him i walked through the house into the garden a mass of dogs were hurtling around and round the lawn and in their midst ears flapping tails waving was a little golden figure of tricky in two weeks he had been transformed into a lith hard masculine animal he was keeping up with well with the pack stretching out in great bounds his chest almost brushing the ground i carried him back along the passage to the front of the house the chauffeur was still holding the car door open and when tricky saw his mistress he took off from my arms in a tremendous leap and sailed into mrs pumphrey's lap she gave a startled oh and then had to defend herself as he swarmed over her licking her face and barking during the excitement i helped the chauffeur to bring out the beds toys cushions coats and bowls none of which had been used as the car moved away mrs pumphrey leaned out of the window tears shone in her eyes her lips trembled oh mr harriot she cried how can i ever thank you 
This is a triumph of surgery by James Harriot. So, what have we learned from this? At times, it hurts more when someone is pampered. It is best to lead a natural life, a life with a lot of exercise, a life with friends, with family. At the same time, we should see that we live a luxurious life, but not but not be tempted to live too much in luxury. So this is Tyron signing off for today. I hope you have enjoyed this chapter as much as I have did teaching you all. I hope you all enjoyed it learning. Stay safe. God bless you and have a wonderful day.